This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. to San Francisco, California we go, and of course the lovely stylings of the music of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Hello Larry. Larry. How are you doing? Good. We we were talking about uh, being easy to work with, and uh, you know, that's how a lot of actors get work, because they're not a pain in the ass to work with. You can always tell who who's a pain in the ass, because they do, their careers are somewhat stunted if anything happens in their career like a big movie fails or a, a, mm-hmm. a, some kind of little uh, uh, gossip starts about them or whatever they're just ready to get rid of them you know uh, but other yeah. people who they like they'll stick with you know they'll fight for uh, I noticed the Co- the Cohen brothers have a lot of character actors they seem to use a lot. And I said, I bet those guys are really nice and probably fun to work with. <laughs> I, I would imagine either that or they they in some cases I think they have a uh, uh, a love for those actors because of their history, you know, and they just want to mm-hmm. work with them. They want to have them in their pictures. So, you know, uh, that's uh, the, uh, the the way it usually works. But you're right. I mean, people who are nice. I think uh, keep getting the work if they're not difficult to work with and so on. And the other people that you put up with because they're big stars and they got a name, but the minute their star starts to diminish, you don't need them no more, you know? Uh, Yeah. But I guess if you're really good like Brando, you can be a total pain and they'll still use you. Like He he just sounded like... uh, it's a horrible nightmare. I, I don't know why anybody would want to work with Brando. I mean, a director. Uh, because he hijacks the picture. Yeah. You know? And he hijacks your directing. I mean, he almost drove Coppola to suicide, you know, on uh, uh, Apocalypse Now. I mean, he was he was very difficult. And, and yeah, sec- that's what I heard, yeah. And secondly, he never came prepared. All his lines were written on cue cards which were scattered around the room, sometimes on the ceiling. That's why he would look up at the sky and start talking, you know, because he was looking at a cue card. Uh, he couldn't oh. work without cue cards. He was that the, lazy. The famous picture of uh, the, his lines are on Robert Duvall's jacket. I've seen that picture. Oh, really? Right I've never seen yeah. that. <laughs> oh, it's a great picture, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all his lines right there. Well, he went into Apocalypse Now. If you ever watch the movie, uh, um, uh, there's a film his wife made about the making of the film. I'm trying to remember the name of it now because it's, it's, it's the original story, the Richard Conrad story that the movie was taken from. And, and it's all about Coppola slowly going crazy. And then Brando shows up. And he stalls the whole production. He's only got him for like a week or something like that. You know, and he's paying him an incredible amount of money for a week's worth. And he's not doing anything. He And they're getting up to the end of the week, and he hasn't even shot some film on him. Because he's, <laughs> he's just, you know, it, it just was driving him crazy. I think he gave him another week or something, and he, he finally came through with a performance. But that was, you know, why you, why anybody would inflict themselves with Brando is beyond me. You know, I mean, he was great. He was interesting. Everything he ever did, even if it was bad, was interesting, you know, because of the approach he took towards it. And there was a thing called The Missouri Breaks, a film with uh, Jack Nicholson. And he plays a bounty hunter who's got a bad tooth. I mean, he created this part about the bad tooth as part of the character. And you get to see a real actor acting. 
because he really somehow this whole he keeps tapping his his face like he's his tooth is bothering him you know and i just think that piece of of uh, of work there that little piece of of business really sold him in the part and and he was you know he he could do comedy he did a thing called uh, a bedroom story uh, which later was remade into Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and he was he was hilarious. He did comedy really? beautifully. Yes. I've never heard that one. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, try and find a be- bedroom story. David Niven, Marlon Brando, and it was made later on into Dirty Rotten Scoundrels with Steve Martin playing the Brando part. Um, but I mean, uh, just you know, I mean, he was. I can tell you as someone who was trying to be an actor when I was growing up that he was a great actor. He was really a terrific actor uh, and and a master of his craft. But I don't think he cared enough about his craft, you know? Uh, because then he went on and just said nothing but crappy movies. God, you know, one right after the other. He didn't care what he... Just give me a check, I'll show up, you know. And he... Uh uh, he went from a sex symbol to kind of didn't he balloon up at the end? Well, you know, you know it's my old joke. Uh, I used to do this joke about uh, what's his name, the, uh, the Uncle Fester in the uh, Adams family, Jackie Coogan. <laughs> Jackie Coogan, when he was a kid, was the kid. He was Char- in Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. And if you see him in that movie, he is the most adorable child you've ever seen in movies. Just incredible. And I used to have a joke that went, and then he became Uncle Fester in the uh, Adams family. And I said, What morning did he wake up, look in the mirror, and say, What the fuck happened to me? <laughs> you know? I mean, really. I mean, wh- when yeah. do you say, When did Brando wake up, look in the mirror, and go, Wow, I'm a little out of shape? You know, because he was a sex symbol when he was in Streetcar Named Desire. There wasn't a woman yeah. or a gay man in America who wasn't hot for him. You know, so <laughs> it was amazing. And I met Brando once. Really? Yes. It was Carol Chessman. You remember Carol Chessman? He was the red light I've bandit, heard. and they executed him at, at um, uh, San Quentin. And uh, he had had lots of stays of execution. He became a big cause celebre because he wrote a book about being on death row and uh, he never killed anybody he wasn't accused of killing anybody he was kidnapping and in those days you get the death penalty for kidnapping Wow! and uh, the night before I went with my tape recorder from the radio station out to San Quentin because there were all these people protesting and uh, I uh, you know I was interviewing people and so on it was early in my, really early in my career, I mean about three minutes into my career and uh, Brando shows up uh, to protest so uh, I I go over to him with my microphone and I said could we talk to you Mr. Brando and he went no <laughs> and that was my interview with Marlon Brando ladies and gentlemen <laughs> no well you got, a, you got a word out of him yeah I got the word no I wish I still had that recording. I would love to. I would love to just play it. Here's my interview with Marlon Brando. No, that'd be great. Yeah. No. Uh, and then he uh, was he the first person to refuse the Oscar? I think so. I, I was, don't know of anybody else who refused the Oscar. I'd have to ask my friend Shecky. I thought uh, what's his name did. Uh, well, wait a minute. George George uh, George C. Scott. Well, let's see here. Who has, do this into Google, refused the Oscar? Okay, and the answers are George C. Scott declined the Best Actor nomination for Patton. That was declining the nomination. Uh... Okay, uh, and he had the decency to let the Academy know that if he he would refuse the award if he won, he won anyway, and reportedly wow. called the Oscars a two-hour parade. Today, the actor would be irate. Okay, <laughs> uh, who didn't? Um, 
three Oscar winners who refused their awards and why. Okay, so you, first you had Dudley Nichols won the 1935 Oscar for Best Screenplay. That's early on. First person to reject an Oscar was screenwriter Dudley Nichols, who won for Best Screenplay for the film The Informer. Good picture. Okay, the next time was George C. Scott, Oscar for Best Actor, uh, who was noted to utter his distaste for the entire ceremony and was nominated for his performance as General George S. Patton in the film Patton. Uh, he had been nominated in 1962 for Best Supporting Actor in The Hustler and had refused it then. When nominated the second time, he again refused the nomination. Um, he called it a two-hour meat parade. <laughs> He's right. And uh, finally, the other Oscar is Marlon Brando. So there are three people who've refused Oscars. And what did Brando were. refuse for? Godfather. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. And do you remember who picked it up for him? She just died uh, recently. Sashin, Sashin Littlefeather. Yeah, Sashin Littlefeather. Let me see. Is she still alive? I don't know. Well, Google her. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's Sasheen Littlefeather. There's a picture of her in her outfit. Um, well, let's see here. Well, let me see here. Uh, bu- 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 I got to, again, go to Google and put in Sasheen Littlefeather. Littlefeather. Here we go. Is she still alive? Wait a minute. Sashin Little, I said Sashin Little Feather. Stop it. Well, but now I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh well. Hold, hold on a second. Little Feather. I, l- yeah? I love this movie trivia. This is yeah. great. I'm trying to look it up, folks. That's why I'm kind of silent here for a second. Here, Shasheen Little Feather. Uh, born, uh, she's still alive. She's still alive. She's 74 years old. Don't you, God, you're young. Her, her real name is Marie Louise Cruz. I don't think she was a model and activist for Native American civil rights, best remembered for blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. but with a name like Mary Louise Cruz, how Indian was she? <laughs> anyway, those are the three people that refused the Oscars, so now you will remember okay. it forever. Uh, that, 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 the, the screenwriter has to be the oddest one. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's odd. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, uh, as you know, I've been nominated for the Radio Hall of Fame. Uh, and there's a part of me that wants to win it, you know, obviously. I'm not going oh, that's to, epic, yeah. And I'm not going to, I'm also going to have to say what so many people say. It's an honor to be nominated. You know, I can't put down the fact that I've been nominated. Uh-huh. But after it's all over and there's a winner, it doesn't matter whether you were nominated. Uh, I mean, I suppose nominated for, you know, Radio Hall of Fame Alex Bennett, but I'd be better if. Hall of Famer Alex Bennett were the name that they had there. <laughs> but I don't. what I don't like about it is the contest aspect. You know? Oh, we've got four people here, and now the public gets to vote. It only, they only represent one twenty-fifth of the vote. The other 24 votes are the, in, the uh, nominating committee, the people in the nominating committee and who they vote for. Okay? Uh, so... Uh, you know, uh, it, it, but it becomes a, 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 what do you call it, a contest. And I just don't think art should be a contest, you know? Um, they should say, just say, we got together this year, and we decided the best picture is blah, blah, blah. Not, oh, uh, here, let's have five and ten nominees, and let's uh, say them all, and let's show all the producers and how anxious they look. And all, I just don't, I don't like that aspect of it. So the aspect of this being kind of a contest rather than just saying, oh, you know, uh, why don't we give Alex Bennett, to give, let him in the Hall of Fame. And they, they do that with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They don't have a contest. 
You know, they just yeah, that's the rock, true, yeah. Yeah, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. These are going to be the inductees this year. And just say, okay, these are the inductees. Now, I got, uh, I was, I'm in the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame. And I actually got there before I knew it. I didn't even know that the voting was going on and everything. And then they wrote me and said, you just, you've just won uh, as one of the people to be in, entered into the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame. So that, you know, that was nice. But uh, still, it was a contest. And I just don't like contests where art is concerned. And so, therefore, I agree with these guys with the Oscars when, you know, he called, uh, what's his name, called it a meat parade. You know, yeah, it is a meat parade. And it is mm -hmm. a, it, 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 why should you go there so they can take a picture of you anxiously waiting to see if you won and then how disappointed you look when you lost? You know, this... There's something undignified about all of that. Yeah, well, it's, uh, America loves winners and losers. I guess they try to push that aspect of it, and it is annoying. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, we do that with television, too. And we do it with, with, with the Grammys every year. You know, just get around, figure out which was the best record this year. Or, or if you just want to honor people, okay? We just want to bring Alex Bennett into the Hall of Fame because he's had a long career and he deserves it, so we'll put him in there. And here are a few more other people that we think have really contributed to the business and are contributing today to the business, and we'll enter them into the Hall of Fame. But, you know, they have, like, categories here uh, uh, of active, like active radio personality, music radio personality, active talk personality. So they're working right now, and they're one category, okay? And then there are these two other categories of, old farts like me who have had a career and now we're getting voted on for our career you know I don't expect yeah. that I'm going to win I don't expect that uh, I don't think I'm that well known I may be mistaken but I don't think I'm that well known I don't think I'm as well known as Sally Jesse Raphael I don't think I'm even as well known as a guy like Larry Elder who's on the radio right now on a network you know, um, and those other two guys, I don't know who the hell they are. Um, but I, I don't think my chances are very good because I, I just don't, if I was I'm still on the air right now, I might have a better chance, you know, but. Yeah, that would help, but we will, uh, we'll get, the <laughs> we'll stuff the ballot box. <laughs> yeah, we'll stuff the ballot box. Well, you know, I mean, um. Uh, I said to a friend of mine who's on the nominating committee, I said, uh, but the vote of the public it only counts for 124th, right? One, 125th, rather. And he said, yeah. And he said, then he got the nominating committee. He says, yeah, but a lot of times they listen to what the public says. You know? Oh, okay. Now, that may not be the case this time. He didn't say it happens all the time. But... Um, you know, I'm I'm again, I'm going to ask people to write in, and I'm going to uh, you know put things up on various places where people can see that I'm nominated. Uh, but I I don't have the power of a Larry Elder who can say to his entire audience, "Hey, go there and put my name in." Boom. Although I don't think he can do it because it turns out he just decided to run for governor of California along with 84 other people. Uh, <laughs> and that means they're going to have to take him off the air. So he, oh, does, that's right, so yeah. he doesn't have that, uh, that, uh, that, that, you know, bully pulpit from which to win the award. So I mean, he may be, uh, that may hurt him. Um, but, you know, and then I think about the, the people on the nominating committee and they're going to say, well, we should give it to, to Sally Jesse Raphael because that'll make all the papers. You know, that'll make news. Alex Bennett won't make news. It won't be big headlines. Hey, Alex Bennett is <clears throat> being inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. So, I don't know. But I can be nominated up to five times, so maybe next year. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I don't know. I still think it's cool you got nominated. It's, nobody was nominated, I think, for a podcast. I think they have yet to recognize that as being radio. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, the podcast awards, will, somebody will come up with those. 
Well, anybody can do a fucking podcast, you know? I mean, I do a podcast four nights a week, and nobody really cares. I mean, it's just one of, I think, what I read, three million podcasts out there? You know? Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I think there's like 5,000 a day start, and like the majority of them quit in a week. Well, before, I used to do a radio show. And I would do a radio show, and there were, what, in, in the market, 22 other stations, 25 other stations. So I'm tr competing against 25 stations. Now I'm competing against 3 million podcasts. Yeah. You know, and, and the ones that are going to do the best are the ones that are associated with, like, a network where CBS says, listen to our podcast, blah, 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 you know. I, I don't have that same kind of, again, bully pulpit. So it, it's a whole different business. And I I imagine I could probably win eventually if I kept getting nominated enough because I said about the San Francisco Hall of Fame, um, they're getting down to the, dreg, the dregs when it comes <laughs> to radio because there is no more radio. You know, it's like a dying profession. Yeah, uh, and uh, people are not listening to radio anymore. So, as you try to get uh, people for the broadcast hall of fame, the 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 window starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller until perhaps there are only five people left doing radio in San Francisco. You know, so uh, I um, you know I I uh, I think the same thing is going to happen with uh, the radio hall of fame. I think eventually they're either going to have to encompass podcasts. Or they're going to have to just say, well, there's nobody left. <laughs> you know? We're closed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they can keep voting for me forever. I mean, I think I can be dead and, and win. I, there are no dead people on the list this year. But they better hurry up because a couple of us are going to be, you know. So uh, Get a rare posthumous award. Yeah, I, I, I don't want any posthumous awards. I want them now. I want to know that you loved me now, okay? I don't want any posthumous awards. Forget about it. I'm dead. I don't know about it. Oh, my, okay. my, my children? I don't have any children. They don't care. My wife? Who knows? She may go before me, you know? So there are no posthumous awards. Give them to me now. Yeah. Of course, the other point is, let's say I get it, okay? I'm Hall of Fame recipient of Radio Hall of Fame Alex Bennett. Yeah, is it going is it, is it to get me work? I don't think so, you know. But it sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good. But we'll see what happens. But I, but I understand why these people, I'm surprised more people didn't do this for the Oscars. Because I mean, it, it, you know, it's a contest for art, and there should the only contest in art should be, um, you know, how many tickets you sold to a movie, or how many listeners mm -hmm. you got to a radio show. Uh, that that's the that's the reward. You know, the only reward I ever got is I knew there was a large audience out there listening to me, and uh, they were all enjoying the show, and I was enjoying performing it for them. You know, so. That that made me a winner. Yes, yeah, true. Nevertheless, I hope I win. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it is it, it's like the uh, it's just a, the making it a contest. It oh, really uh, did is. Did you kind of. did you did you like the comedy competition? No, it's horrible. Yeah, horrible. But th why did you do it? Yeah, you wanted to. I guess you wanted to get some exposure, but. Uh, it was not. Uh, well, you know what? Plus, you're, you're yeah. pitted against people you like too. It was. It was, it was no, I felt bad. Like, I felt bad when I did poorly, and then uh, I felt bad when I did, did good. And my friends got did poorly. It just it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. It, it, and no. it, 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 is it still going on? I guess they still have it, right? It is. Yeah. It's they. Uh, it, they didn't do it last year because the pandemic, but it's been going on since uh, yeah. 1976. Wow, wow! Well, when anyway. Bill Farley beat Robin Williams, yep, first year, first year, and where? And, and, and hmm? only only one woman has ever won the competition. Who was that? Uh, Marsha Warfield. Marsha Warfield. Who who remembers her? 
you anyway. Yeah. Hey, listen. You did night court. Although yeah. she had one of the greatest lines I ever heard. Because uh, mm-hmm. she, she, she had a real attitude. You know? So uh, she was doing some TV show, and they told her right before she went, Oh, do, do ten minutes, and we're going to edit to six. So she goes up and does six minutes, and she comes off stage and goes, Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to go. Okay. God, I love talking to you. You're you me best. too, man. You're, you're the I best. love talking to you. I love talking to you about movies for some reason. Yeah. You know so much. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bubs, Bubs, Bubs. Who doesn't love Bubs? Nobody hates Bubs. Everybody lo- everybody loves Bubs. That'd be a good name for a series. Anyway, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Friday already, and my eyes are burning less today, but they're still burning. So I went out and got my little tissue that I have with water to make it better. But see how red my eyes are? Jeez almighty. I don't know what it is. I think it's something in this apartment. I really do. I think we have a sick apartment here. And uh, uh, I think there's something here. Because uh, like tomorrow night, tomorrow I'm going out to see Shecky. Okay? So I'm going out to Queens. And I want to see when I get out there if my eyes are still burning. If they're still burning, then it's just general stuff out there in the air. But I went, for, I went out today. I had to go uh, get some stuff for our court appearance. Uh, some papers of rental stuff from uh, I had to go down to the Adam Clayton Powell Jr. office building the state office building and so I went down there and I got this thing and I came back and I found that when I was walking out there that my eyes weren't burning as much you know I had very little problems with the burning so I think I think it's something else okay I think it's something in this in this apartment I can't figure out what it is but uh, what the hell Anyway, it's time for us to now go to our panel, uh, our citizen panel, uh, which, uh, uh, here they come. There's uh, Jeff, and uh, there's uh, uh, oh, there's Josh, and uh, there are a couple of people missing here. Uh, oh, oh, there's, uh, <laughs> there he is. There's, uh, there's trucker Steve. How you doing, Steve? Good. Good? You better? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're getting kind of used to the uh, to the, uh, the dialysis and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll let you kind of wake up a little bit there. Hello, Josh. How you doing tonight? Good. How you doing? Yeah, we love having Josh here. That was a great show last uh, the last Friday, Josh, with you, with you and and uh, Patrick and uh, and uh, Kevin. Thank you for doing it. Huh? Hope people like. Yeah, well, thanks for doing it. You know, got a lot. We got a lot of people watching it, and uh, it was, uh, it was, it was just a, a nice, friendly uh, political discussion, as I call it. Hello, Alan. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, Alan? I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. I'll survive. I, you know, lightheaded all the time, but I think <clears throat> it's the drugs that are in me. Welcome to your sixties. Yeah, welcome to my sixties. <laughs> Forget, forget that. I kissed those all away a long time ago. Hey, yeah. Where's Rocky, by the way, Trucker Steve? Upstairs with the wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at my brother-in-law's house. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm in the, ba- I'm in the basement. Uh, why, why, why are you at your brother-in-law's house? Just visiting? Yeah, just visiting. What happened? Let me ask you a question. What happens with the, uh, with the dialysis? If, let's say you want to go to some uh, some place on vacation or something can they find places in those towns for you to do dialysis um yeah probably yeah um we won't be doing any traveling like that for a while right right no but uh, but we're only a couple uh, come here for the weekend i got the weekend free oh okay then you go back and you is, is, yeah, I get dialysis this morning. How long does it take? Three hours. Three hours. Okay. 
Is it and you got enough to do? You do some reading, watch TV. Um, yeah. Today I was pretty sleepy. I slept through most of it. Oh, okay. Okay, mm. good. And and after the dialysis, do you feel better? I mean, does it make you feel yeah. better? Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Well, then. And, and two kilograms lighter every time. Two kilograms lighter? They weigh me in the beginning. Yeah. And in the end, they weigh me. And I'm always lighter when I come out. Why are you lighter? What what what, what is less in you? Fluid. Fluid? Really? They take enough fluid out to for Yeah. I've lost over thirty pounds since it started. Yeah. Now are you in the you know on TV when they had this show Be Positive, the guy who's in his di dialysis, it's a group of people that are always there at the same time. Are these the same people every time with you or different people? Uh, sometimes I see the same people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're getting. But I'm in a, yeah. But they have three different rooms in the hospital where they treat people with dialysis. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. Depends on the room I go. But so, most of the people that I see in there are much older than me. Really. Yeah. Is what happened to you considered uh, something that older people get rather than younger people? Uh, I don't know about that, but most of the people I I see are older. Yeah, how much like, how much older? I mean, are they really old? Or? Well, maybe your age or really? Hmm. Yeah, that old. Wow. Seventies, sixties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better and that life is okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And and there's Tony. Tony with this fresh, wonderful, spanking new haircut. I'm getting all my money's worth, 20 bucks. Hopefully looking, it looking good, Tony, week. looking good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, At least you have hair to cut, you know? Yeah, but it's it's starting to go this way, like Count Chocula a little bit. That's so, Josh, cool. anything on your mind tonight? Well, I don't know. It's so... I don't know if they have these apps or whatever, but if not, could someone invent one that like you download it and you can type in like a keyword and it will block like any and everything on all your social media and anything of anything you don't want to see. You know, like I just want to go into mine and put like the word Olympics so that I don't have to fucking hear about that for like three weeks. It will be outstanding like i don't know if there's one for that but if there is there should be because i, I, would, I gotta i have a uh, i have a thing on my browser i don't have it turned on mm -hmm. right now because i found it got annoying after a while that every time it saw the name trump it replaced it with the name drumpf uh That's and not bad and, yeah and uh, I would imagine if they could do that, they can come up with something where the you you know the keyword comes up and then it just doesn't you don't see it it blocks yeah. it, you know. Yeah, I mean it would just be not, you know it's like I, I I'll stay away from the news. Anybody, any one of you watched the opening ceremonies of the Olympics? I watched a few seconds of it. Uh, yeah. Is that I all? just have one question. Yeah, where were all the uh, people? <laughs> there was nobody in the crowd. Why were they out athletes waving? <laughs> they were, weren't they? Who are you waving at? Yeah, well, probably waving at mom and dad back home. The TVs? Who knows? They're trying to make the best of a bad thing. I mean, these Olympics should not have been held. Okay? I mean, it's just, it's pathetic. Their COVID is much worse than ours. And, and do you see how many people, how many of the athletes have come down with yeah, COVID? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's terrible. It's yeah. just terrible. And why are they doing it? Ka-ching, ka-ching. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We want the money. Yeah. You know, the only reason I would do it is because you've had all these athletes training for it. They trained for it last year, and they were at their prime last year when they were getting ready for it, and then it was canceled. So if you cancel it again, you take somebody like a Simone Biles, and you're putting her about two years out. You know, without her being able to compete, and she, already she's an old she's an old woman for mm -hmm. this sport. I mean, she's still the best they got, but she's an old woman, 
And uh, she knows that her, you know, the clock is ticking on her. And maybe she'd like to have another one. So, I, you know, that's a part of me. That, but you know what I heard today that made me feel very good, Josh? And all of you. You know, I've been complaining about Jeff Bezos and his whole attitude of uh, me and my astronauts, you know, which mm -hmm. I felt using the term astronaut for that group of people really cheapened the word astronaut a great yeah. deal. And there is an official astronaut designation and you do get a pin for that designation and they said they're not giving it to any of those people that flew on those two flights because in order to get one of those you have to perform some kind of service and they didn't perform any kind of service so hmm. yeah well that's good yeah i mean i see we still don't have a the infrastructure bill no. That's not moving along very well. Yeah. You know, I mean, they confuse me with all that. I, I mean, I don't, I mean, well, they spent three or four days arguing about whether or not they should have a vote or not for a bill they don't even have written yet. I mean, yeah, but I mean, the other, know, the other, yeah. the other part about this that's really terrible <laughs> is that these people should be working their asses off to help the American public and they don't do anything for the American public. Well, you know, they yeah. just get into these bitchy bitch fights, you know, and right. that's it. I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, like you said, I'm a, you know, fair minded common sense or whatever. But I mean, you know, when Republicans say you're asking us to vote for closure on a bill that you're not even done writing yet. It's kind of hard to argue their point. <laughs> <Yeah. I> mean, <laughs> You know, I mean, and, and I listened to what everyone had to say, Schumer and everything. Well, we're just asking to proceed. I'm aware of that. But, it, I, I mean, again, it's kind of hard to argue their point. You're not even, you, it's not even done. I mean, you haven't even done writing yet. And I know that if you throw something in there we don't like, we can just vote no, and that's fine. Right. But just finish it and then do all that. Right. I mean, right. just, I don't, I mean... I don't really understand what all that's about. I mean, it's just a big waste of time. Yep. No slow. Give us our stuff or don't. Yeah, you know? exactly. And if you don't, we'll get new people. We probably won't, but that's what we should do. Yeah. But, you know, we won't. But, you know, they, they didn't, no, no real progress on that that I know of, unless some happened today, but I don't remember hearing about any. You know something? I haven't been watching the news. I just, I haven't watched, I don't think I've watched it once, uh, uh, maybe for maybe for two minutes this week. Yeah. I just, I've, I just, I mean, I've been staying away the last couple of weeks. Um, I, I'll listen to some like in the morning on my way to work before 6 a.m. when I'm driving. Yeah. You know, just like the 15 or 20 minutes. And I, I mean, I just, you know, like stay informed, but. Like this morning I did, and I actually, I never listen to any, you know, like music or anything in the mornings, but I actually did this morning because, I mean, it's, we're just in this stage now where it's just going to be Delta Variant Olympics, Delta Variant Olympics, I mean, that's like the only <laughs> two words you're going to say for at least the next three weeks, and I'm just, I, I just, I don't want to hear about any of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean, Congress is doing their thing, nothing. Yeah. That's nice. So I see the state of Mississippi asked the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade, and that was a headline. I didn't read the article. I don't know what that's all mm -hmm. about. Yeah. I've checked into that a little bit. That should be exciting. I'm sure they'll jump jump at the chance. You know? Who who they they were asking who now? What is this? I didn't hear. That. I don't know. I read an article. I'm sorry. I read a headline earlier that said state of Mississippi asked asked Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. So there must be a lawsuit yeah. that they're. No, yeah, they, 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 asking for certiary on and how, how many times well to begin with the Supreme Court has to want to take it Correct. you know mm -hmm. uh, and how many times have they just said okay you know we've we've, we've ruled on this so many other yeah. times and, and like you know. like I said I didn't read the article so I don't know what case that has gone through the lower courts it's referring to or any of that I don't know I just I, I'm just saying I just saw the headline and I said oh well, that's, 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 yeah I'm sure they'll take a look at that you know soon as the olympics yeah over. uh there was a, there was a headline i saw earlier and i can't uh, and they can't, it came by and it went and i i'm looking to see if i can find it here but i don't see it here at all so 
I do see, however, the police have finally said that 98 people died in the Florida condo collapse. Remember when it was 150? Hmm. I guess the rest were on vacation. Hmm. You know, I mean, that's probably the reason why it's lower than well, it should be. You know, yeah, they finished. We're gonna figure that out. I don't think there's been a lot going on. I mean, I think oh, it's been oh, I, fairly slow. News. I know what it was. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Attorney General, I think, of either the United States or or uh, or uh, New York, uh, has said that uh, Cuomo didn't do anything wrong in the nursing home situation. Really? Yeah, oh. and that there are going to be no no charges pressed. It's uh, fake news. Huh? Fake news. Well, it's not fake news. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> It, it's not fake news. I mean, it's it's good that they they said that. Now we'll find out if he patted anybody's ass. That's the next thing we got to find out. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Alan. So, although I was not on the show last night because my internet was not doing its thing, mm -hmm. I I watched the show last night. I thought it was a good show with you and Robert. Yeah. Robert seems to be calmer. I don't know. He's 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 very interesting to listen to. He's a smart guy. Yeah. And uh, you know, he brought up the Mitch McConnell thing yesterday. Sean Hannity also changed his tune. Yes. And said yes. I was going to. Everybody should that. get vaccinated too. And I thought, I think the Republicans are realizing they're not vaccinated and they're losing people at record numbers. There was a, I believe. And is he in Atlanta? Was that where I saw it? There was this uh, talk show host, right-wing talk show host, who spoke out against getting vaccinated. He was like, "Now oh. he's got it in Florida." No, it's not in Florida. Oh no, it's not in Florida. Different one, I guess. Yeah, and and he is at death's door. <laughs> it's I, not even. I thought I, read, I thought I read this morning he was in a, a conservative talk his show. His name was. Though. His name is Valentine. Person. Right. Yeah. Are you sure that's not Florida? I no, no. It was like it, I. I seem to. Th I. It was Tennessee. That's where. It okay. Was. Yeah. Florida, Tennessee. What's the difference? Yeah. So, what, do you, what do you mean? What's the difference? <laughs> old, yeah, Florida, you hate Tennessee. You would probably old, live. Old, in. old people don't move to Florida. I mean, don't move to uh, Tennessee. Yeah, <laughs> it's still too cold. Good. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, but so, yeah, I like how the Republicans are all of a sudden like their light bulb went on in their head and said, oh, my God, you know, it's time to start vaccinating our people before they all die. Yeah, well, I mean, duh. It, yep, yeah. that's what I say, duh. Why, why do you think, Josh, has been this change of, uh, of faith in the Republican Party where it comes to the vaccine? I don't know that I have an explanation for that one. Didn't they just have a meeting like two or three weeks ago where the main theme was don't get vaccinated? You mm -hmm. remember the CPAC? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I heard, or not heard, I'm sorry. I read a little bit in the Washington Post a few days ago about how the White House had personally had staff people working some of these folks yeah to change their tune and you know maybe it worked um mm -hmm. i don't know what they were saying to them or anything like that i, I didn't read the whole article just uh, like open well, he, it, 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 the white house was working fox news specifically one of the i don't know that i can explain that well uh fox news you know fox. there's an explanation Hell just froze over. No, I think the explanation is probably somebody told them that, hey, you really, you you really want your, you know, your constituency to die, and then you have nobody to vote for you. Some yeah. new polls probably uh, came in. I yeah. mean, there's there's yeah, a decent but... chance that, sort of building off that new polls came in theory that it's maybe not a joke that they may have moved on to have some interest in ending this permanently, making it disappear so that it is out of people's minds for a year or two mm. at the midterms and beyond so that as soon as it's gone yeah. and they have the midterms, they can move into two to two and a half years of just nonstop 
getting Trump back in on his original message with the COVID out of the equation, because I think a lot of them may realize that a lot of his loss had to do with his mishandling of the COVID situation. So if they can remove it from the equation, they can go back to the playbook that worked the first time mm-hmm. with that not being a factor and they can run it. Well, that may be, that may be a That's pretty, that may, may be one of the plausible theories. Uh, exactly. The other was that I heard that, you know, for all that Fox uh, and, and the people on Fox were railing against vaccines, which they're now, Hannity's now saying, go get vaccinated. Um, that everyone at Fox was required by the company to get vaccinated. Yeah. So well, huh? now they're trying to change this the story. You know, they're, they're, it was all oh, don't get the vaccines, blah blah blah. Now it's well, go get the black scene, go get the vaccines. But it's the Democrats that caused the whole thing, and now they're trying to cover up where where it came from. You know, they're just trying to change the story. Well, they're always okay. trying. I still think hell froze over, and that's why they're getting a vaccine. Well, you know, uh, it could you could be could be correct on that one. I haven't checked the weather okay. forecast for hell. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people who have decided not to get an injection mm-hmm. are still holding the same course. I, I don't think, think there's millions of people changing their mind I think there like are a lot, over the weekend. I think there are a lot of people changing their mind because uh, it's just not, uh, there are too many people dying from it who are unvaccinated. In other words, it's, yeah. it's, it, people are starting to say, well, wait a minute, maybe I could be dogmatic about this. I could be political about this, but I could be dead because of this, you know? <laughs> And it's all their viewers. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I think that uh, the majority of the, the you know the states that have the least amount of vaccinations mm-hmm. are red states, and yeah. maybe you know it took them a couple of weeks to look at the news and say, oh my God, we're losing our our people. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so uh, but the, 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 does it does it take that to get them to change their mind on this whole deal? That's what I don't get. You know, I mean, it was just good common sense. Hey, here we got a way out of this. Everybody, go get it. Go get your your shot. Now it looks like we might have to get a booster. They're, they're starting to talk about that. Yeah. Because of the variant, you know. Possibly they're, they're, Pfizer. Well, they're I, probably I, Pfizer. What well, Moderna's okay, I, huh? Yeah. Well, I heard I heard, I read, saw a headline somewhere in the paper today that said that Pfizer it, it, is probably gonna they're doing studies and it looks like they might have to get a booster yeah and johnson and johnson seems that they seem to have some problems with that yeah you know so pfizer and moderna are both doing testing they have been for months and the the ceo at pfizer made a a mistake he he looked at profits and announced that we are we're definitely going to have to get a COVID vaccine. Then he had to backpedal. He talked to Fauci, mm. CDC, mm-hmm. FDA last week, and, and they all said, "Don't ever do that again." You know, and he apologized to everybody. Who and apologized? Oh, oh, him. The yeah. CEO oh. Of, of of Pfizer. So we we may you know we may need a booster, but he shouldn't be the one that makes the determination. They should present the science, which is not done yet. They're expecting it to be done, both Moderna and Pfizer, in September. And when that's done, they'll present it to the CDC and FDA, and they'll look at it and say yay or nay. But both of them say, right now, uh, you know, if you're fully vaccinated, like you've been saying, Alex, your chances are not real high at getting COVID. And if you do get it, it's more like a cold. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not well, everybody. There'll be a few people that'll die of it, but that's the numbers are very low. Well, no, the 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 chances of you dying of it are so minuscule that uh, it, it probably no chance of it really. You know. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I'm still going to wear a mask when I'm going into a store. You know, I I'm do still, too. I'm going to yeah. wear a mask when I go into a, a large crowd, but yeah. when I'm outdoors, just walking down the street, uh, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not uh, you know, I think even Fauci said, you know, a few months back, and the other guy that's the 
that used to be the head of the of the of the FDA or mm -hmm. something like that, or uh, and he's now on Pfizer's board, mm -hmm. and they they all said that out in the open your chances unless you're in a large crowd are very low. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? All right. How y'all doing? Anything rankling your ankles? <laughs> Um, no, I got a new leg today, though. You got a new leg? Uh, yeah, I got my five-year leg. Wait, 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 wait. You said wrangling your ankles, so well, I brought I, that up. Oh, I see. Okay. What What do you mean by a leg? You haven't had a fake leg, have you? No, no, no. no I no. call it my leg. It's my... Uh, it's a brace? My uh, AFO brace. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> does it do... I got the... new, new leg and new, new shoes to go with them. Yeah. yeah. My annual shoes. Gee, look at us. We got Mr. Kidney over here. I'm Mr. Prostate. You're Mr. Leg. Uh, <laughs> it's like a waiting room here. I'm the fat show. Huh? Yeah. You bet I'm the fat guy on the show. You know? Yeah, the, the morbidly obese. Thank yeah. you. Uh -huh. I mean, you, you would say you're morbidly obese, wouldn't you? I weigh a little bit over 300, yes, I would say so. I would say that's morbidly obese. My but so is being 81, so, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know what my mother would have said? What? He's just pleasantly plump. Pleasantly plump. Pleasantly oh. plump. It's it's that way. And, oh, wait a minute. We forgot, we forgot Mr. Uh, uh, the Automaton here, Jeff, who's, yeah. who's got a, you know. I got a lot. You got the heart thing. You got the, what the, oh, yeah. uh, what do you have? Is it the pump in there? What is it? I got two valves. Uh-huh. Two of them. Two of them. One on top of each other. I got a pacemaker over here. Yeah. And then I have a special uh, a filter over here on this side. Oh, really? Oh. Getting older is not for sissies, is it? No, no, no. Well, but yeah. anyway, yeah, it's good. Well, can you keep the economy question. going? Yeah, ask me a question. Tony wants to know something, and I'm happy to supply him with the information. I think, <laughs> Jeff, I think my brother had the same thing you might have had. Did you have the... Uh, the abnormal of the heart where it was like kind of like turned in where they had to go in and open it up like because he had that where they uh no i didn't he, have that part but. He, he had a stroke yeah. oh okay, sir. Well, but even before the stroke were you feeling tired like in the I, I uh already had heart surgery oh really oh, oh okay yeah. all right and and the stroke was really uh the result of taking the drugs that you have to take to it's what my father used to refer to as a bum ticker. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you so, had you had a couple bad heart valves, Jeff? Uh, I well, I had one bad one. Mm -hmm. There's four of them in there, and right. there's one that was substantially uh, needed help, mm -hmm. and uh, it's been replaced twice. And the, the medicine you're taking so your body doesn't reject the uh, foreign object, I take it? Uh, it's that, and it's a combination of keeping uh, too much blood flowing and not enough. And but, you know, the thing is, you seem whatever they did to you seems to work, because to begin with, you, you, for the years that you've been calling this program, you look healthy. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, I, I've been getting better all the time for some reason since i retired i really i spent a lot more time exercising than yeah than going to restaurants you know. yeah me too <laughs> with a fork in my mouth that's it that's, you got to get rid of that i know so um but anyway the biggest problem is for me on, on a daily basis is when i had that stroke uh, I have a limited amount of uh, memory on words, so mm -hmm. you know, just can't remember that word. And uh, listen, it's getting that way with me. And well, I know. I, don't, and I haven't have had that. a. I haven't had a stroke. I know. But I am I taking that damn for gabalin, and it makes me forget stuff and oh. tired all the time. And, if you stop taking it and you still forget stuff, then you'll know that it wasn't the drug. No, no, I know it's the drug because I, there's stuff that I just forget and I go, why did I, why did I forget that, you know? That or, happens to me too and I'm not up for gambling. 
uh, I, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it, old, it just it happens. Too. I just and I just I forget a word. You know what I noticed today? I had to. Uh, I got a thing from my union, and it said we want you to fill this out to verify that you're still at that address, <laughs> so that we can send you your, you know, your uh, what do you call it? Your uh, uh, pension. And uh, so I had to fill the thing out. I just had to put down there, you know, that I still was at the same address. And then, would you please sign it, and then print it? I can't sign my name anymore. You can never do it. It's just I, I get I, I get a, a Bennett, you know, B E N N E T, sloughing off S, and then blech. <laughs> yeah, you just like whatever. Did you ever sign autographs or no? Would you do that? Uh, years ago, but I mean, uh, you can't do it now. I just, you know, do you have the same problem, Jeff, with, with it at your age? Anybody else oh, have yeah. the same problem? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't even care about it. Yeah, it's, it's like. You know, I thought J, E, and then after that, it's just too. Cool. I mean, I just wonder, <laughs> I guess I could put X, <laughs> you know? But I mean, why? And so today I got a piece of paper and I started really trying to do my signature and as hard as i would try i would get like the s c h i would get and then yeah. i kind of sloughed off a little of the w a r z and by the time i got to the end it was just <laughs> you know <laughs> and i was and i was really trying and then i had to print it oh that's fun too i look like a retard printing i look my sister's in that i can do that like oh, don't blame the printing you look like a retard all the time I'm being sarcastic. Oh, really? Hold up the sign that says sarcastic. When you're being oh. sarcastic. Okay. Humor. How's yeah. that sound? There you humor? Go. Nah, it wasn't humor. It doesn't. Oh, it's humor. Sarca sarcasm, I think, was a better Okay, sarcasm. Yeah. There's the sarcastic. Yeah. So uh, let me see here. Uh, so you don't want to hear about the Olympics, Josh. And you all possible, and, no. you, and, and, you, and you're tired of hearing about the COVID variant. You know. Well, you know what the problem sure. is? I'll tell you what the problem is. These people have nothing to talk about on their newscasts. You know, ever since Trump is no longer there, he was supplying the, uh, them with endless amounts of material every day. They don't have any material anymore. About the, the Cleveland Guardians. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. What were we going to say, Jeff? You ever hand it? You know, I remember when the Congress people or the senators used to have to all sit in the same place and talk and listen and then get up and say more. And it, it was like they were working together. But nobody even shows up anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's I mean, ridiculous. I think it's time to get rid of about half of the senators that, that we have. Well, well maybe we should limit their terms. Oh. You know. But I, uh, I, I know I agree with you. You ought to thin it down. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, you, you brought up, John, the, uh, the, uh, the Cleveland... The Guardians. <laughs> the Cleveland the Guardians. Guardians. That's a good name because there's like some kind of a bridge that has some kind of statues. Yeah, that's why they did it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's why they I, did I, it. I never knew that. I never yeah. knew that. Didn't they used to be called the Indians? Yeah, yeah, no more Indians. Well, now here's what I don't get. Is Indian a, a, a bad term now? Is, 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 I, 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 don't well, get, I don't get the memos, okay? If, you, I, if you're an Indian, you don't like it. You know, they don't like it. So you change the name. So yeah. why didn't they just yeah. change it to like the Cleveland Native Americans? <laughs> the, the, the the Indian Native Americans don't want that either. <laughs> uh, you know, and they had as their as their uh, as their logo as their mascot a picture of a Indian, but a really traditional Indian chieftain or you know Native American chieftain. And I don't think there was anything wrong with that. No, you know, you're talking about. Uh, the cartoon with the big no big no no head. no that, that we're talking about the uh, with the tomahawk chop oh that's all. the braves that's uh, are the they braves. still the boston braves or uh, the atlanta if, braves if, yeah, been atlanta still, braves are they still the braves yep and do they still have the indian with the big nose as a cartoon indian i don't know 
Yeah, that yeah, I found. That, that was that was the that was the Cleveland Indians. Was it the there Cle- with Chief Wahoo? Yeah, yeah. Well, what was the one? What was the, the Braves one? don't the Braves don't use a they don't use a an Indian. No, they just they just have their, like a tomahawk. That their mat their mat has have a, yeah like an a arrow hatchet. and a oh, wait tomahawk. Wait, I'm getting mixed up here because one of them had like a traditional American Indian and an American Indian headdress and uh, you know rather mm-hmm. dignified looking Indian. Uh, now, I mean, maybe the Washington Redskins in the NFL did. Yeah, that was the Redskins. Was the Redskins that got the had the nice looking Indian guy? Uh, yeah, I, the, think, I think I think they did a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but Chief uh, yeah. Wahoo was from where? Was that Cleveland? Cleveland. Oh yeah. well, in that case, they were right to get yeah. rid of it. You know? That was like a, a, like a bad animated cartoon character looking. Like well, there's also one color. thing about the. Cleveland Indians. How long has it taken them to get rid of it? About a hundred years. I mean, and it's wow. it got to be for the last ten years that people were complaining. They've been complaining for forty years. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it it, uh, it and let's see how many teams. Again, I'm not the sports guy here, even though I have a sports Emmy. Uh, I. Um, how many um, teams do we have in this country that are Indian associated? Then only two, or more. Well, if you, if you consider college and high school, there's probably thousands of them. Oh, you yeah. go across the country, you know. Yeah, but I'm talking about uh, big time sport, sports? professional well, sports. There's the Braves and there's the Blackhawks. Yeah, the Blackhawks hockey. There's the Canucks. <laughs> well, that's unless. Our, is is that um, a derogatory uh, term, Canuck? Uh, is that a, a derogatory term, uh, Steve? No. No. Okay. In parts of in parts of Canada, it is. They don't like it. I, I think if you're from uh, like French can, can, Canada, they don't like it. I don't think. No. Um, like Quebec. No. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so. Uh, that, that, there's that piece of news. Uh, see, I mean, there's so little real news stuff. Uh, did I see something? No, nah, that was that was Cuomo that I was going to bring up. Well, that's it. Anybody have any other news? Well, I got my new news. What? I I had to buy a new car. You had to buy a new car. What is it? Yeah, I kind of had. What do you mean? Is it? Is it the law? It was, well, it was a family deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the car was old, old, old. And, and they still needed it for going out to work. Well, who was this? But, Did you have to buy a new car for you, or was it for somebody else? No, so I bought a new one for me. Okay. Okay. And the only reason that this is important is I got a hybrid car. Oh, you got electric. You got a hybrid. Okay. Yeah. This is pretty. You cool. didn't go all the way electric, right? No. Did you hear that the was a Chevy Bolt? They're blowing up like crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. they're not just catching fire. What they had to, in one case, pull the battery out of the oh. car and drag it out and leave it by the side of the road where it spent the next 24 hours cooling down. <laughs> and their new suggestion for the Chevy Bolt is, do not park your car and overcharge it overnight near your home. That's, that's the <laughs> latest. You do use an extension cord right. and put it on the street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't we sleep in the car. Miles away. <laughs> well, you know, I kind of, I see, I... If I had to buy a car, if I had to buy a car today, um, uh, I, I don't know. I think I would buy a hybrid as opposed to a pure battery. No. Why? Too many problems. What? With with. I I, I pick. We got one. With a hybrid. Yeah, one of those friggin' Priuses. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And we got it for free, so I'm not going to complain. My father-in-law gave it to my daughter for her first car oh okay but god dang it that thing's a i'll tell you i don't know what they were smoking when they built that thing. 
but I'll tell you what, I want some because those those engineers had to be high when they built that thing and, and designed it. Really? I don't know. The way they the way they built it, first of all, just the radio itself. They designed the dashboard mm -hmm. so that the sun beats on the fucking radio. Yeah. And <clears throat> the radio goes bad from being beat on the sun. Now I got the car from Arizona, so it, you know, 135 degrees, and it sits in the sun. The radio don't work no more. Then I drive it up to up the peninsula every couple of days, you know, to, to take care of my mom. So I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and drive the Prius because it's just sitting there while she waits to get her license. So I'm gonna put some miles on it. It's yeah. great mileage, no doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, it's like a magnet for every other freaking car on the road. They don't see you. The wheels are about this big. You try and turn it, and if you make one little jerk on the wheel, you feel like you're going to roll down the freeway like a marble. And and it's a good thing Kevin's you. not complaining about the car. No, I'm not complaining about the car at all. It's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you look out the back window... And it's got that hatchback window, and then this little window here. Like they decided at the last minute, oh fuck, you can't see out the back window. We better put another one there. We'll put another one there. Yeah, and it's got God, this. Yeah. It's got this black bar across the window. So you're trying to adjust the mirror so you can see out the back. You can't do that. Okay. They've got this window that comes down the front pillar. They obviously fucked that up because they put this little mirror, this window about this big in the corner. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, shit, they can't see out there. Here, put a window in there. And I'm going, who the hell was smoking weed when okay, they put now, this Okay, now hold on a second, because Jeff just bought himself a hybrid today. What Not brand did you guy. buy? Was it a Prius? <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm, I'm telling you. What brand? But I will tell you that my wife, who's an environmental case, she has one. Yeah, no, I you know I'm not. I don't I'm, like that car. What type of car did you get, Jeff? Uh, uh, Honda C CRV. Yeah, see, I've right. seen those, and they seem to be decent cars that they just put hybrid stuff in. Yeah. It's the same car. Yeah. yeah. They just put hybrid stuff in it. Yep. But this thing is like a little space rocket that they decided to add a few windows to. And I'll tell you what, I don't know. It, it just, I'm afraid to put my daughter in it. I'm telling you. Really. Uh, Really? Yeah. I told my wife the other day, I said, you know, every time I, I'm driving down the road, people want to change lanes okay, right let me, into my Let me ass. ask you this, because <laughs> you're, you're a guy that knows cars, okay? I, yeah. I assume you know cars. At least you, if you don't, you put up a good act like you do, okay? Uh, 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 I, I, I feel that you, you know, you, you know cars. Well, I avoided you, them for 31 th years in a truck. So. What do you <laughs> think of the purely electric the pure electric? Yeah. I think they got a lot of work to go. Uh, I, I, you know, they're a nice idea, and they're probably good for certain things, but I think they got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, the fact like that the they Nissan got... The Nissan Leaf is that big. You, you look at look at something like these little skateboards that are blowing up. That's the same thing the Volt's doing. Right. Yeah. It's a lithium Volt battery. And the Leaf. It's yeah. a good idea. It's probably going to work someday, but... I think they're pushing them out. Well, here's that. the thing that I, you know, and I haven't, owned, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't owned, I haven't owned a car since 2003. Uh, but if I bought a car tomorrow, I mean, I would want something that was gas efficient, so I'd probably go with something like uh, a hybrid. Well, this thing but, gets I, But I don't know that I want a that battery operated because if I run out of, juice going down the highway i'm always looking at that voltmeter or whatever to make sure that i'm uh, you know and then I, if i have to stop somewhere and juice the thing up how long does it take to to charge them they've got quick they've got quick charges places along the road they got them here at the gilroy outlet mm -hmm. and there's about for, 15 for tesla and they're doing them a lot more and how long yeah. could, does it take to completely charge up a car I think that quick charges will take about 35, 40 minutes. Right? Yeah, but, you know, I mean, unless you want, unless there's a nice restaurant by or, you know, you want to go get a cup of coffee. No, you, they put them at the outlets. <laughs> they put you them away. You need to get a Tesla, oh, yes, Alex. Mm -hmm. They go for about 400 miles between charges, the S yeah. model. But that's the S model is also 100 grand. So yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. 
And then the, the, the thing that's, I do admit that the, the, the mileage is really good. I mean, she drove, when we brought it back from Arizona, we filled it up once only to see how far we went. And it was wow. from Arizona to California. Is and, it my imagination, though? Um, um, oh, now I forgot what I was going to ask. See? There I go. Well, Irv is here. He's got his hand up. Yes, uh, Jack. We're talking about cars and uh, growing up in a family of mechanics and also for uh, three years doing a car talk program uh, in deference to uh, what uh, was said about the Prius. You got to remember that that was first generation electric car tech uh, or hybrid car technology. That's right. You know, and uh, what what year is your uh, Prius? It's a twelve. It's a twelve. So it's about the third or fourth year, isn't it? It's about third year. Yeah. And uh, it's obvious. Uh, <laughs> if you take if you take it in terms of gasoline powered vehicles, that was like a Model T. <laughs> oh sure, yeah, I agree with that. It's the design of the body. I'm not talking about the mechanics. The well, you mechanics know who is probably pretty good. But you know who designed that body? You know who builds the Prius? Toyota. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted to make a product that was startling and new to the automobile community. That's right. And they took acid before they went to the CAD machine. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I don't know about that, but uh, if you want to see one that's on acid, see the new Alfa Romeos. <laughs> But um, uh, they wanted uh, to get away from what they considered to be their marketing problem with Toyota's main line of being kind of a stodgy car. They wanted something new and exciting and different. Uh, uh, if you want to look at it from that point, you know, I love old cars. And uh, take a look at it this way. Go find pictures of the air flow. I think it was the air flow or the air stream from Chrysler Corporation in the yeah. 1930s. They couldn't give those sons of bitches away. They were, and they were good cars mechanically. They just looked but ugly. And mm -hmm. some of the same problems that you're talking about, about uh, your, your 2012 uh, Prius, they were talking about the 1935 Chrysler Airflows. Right. It, it, it's the same, you know, pro problems with, with a new vehicle, but you would think with the technology nowadays that they would avoid those kind of problems. Mm. And, and it, it looks like a little rocket. The, the, the technology in the, in the, and obviously in the hybrids have been a lot less problems than the pure electric cars. I think that your hybrids, the half engine, I mean the half gasoline, half electric cars, have been a lot less problems, I think, than the pure electric. Well, let me cars. ask you this: the ori the original Teslas, which were the big original electric cars, okay, did didn't they make them electric by taking a bunch of uh, of uh, of uh, lithium batteries and just simply sticking them together? They still do. Is that what they're still doing? Mm -hmm. Pretty yep. much. You it would is. think they would Make be them building stronger and stronger batteries, right? But you would think they would just build a really efficient large battery to put in the back not that's just they're doing that's yeah. what they're doing in nevada that's they're still they're going to open up a, a big factory out there if they haven't done it already yeah so the complication with the lithium battery why not build a big battery is and tesla seems to figure out a way and they're building them like like um, kevin said heat displacement and so having a lot of small batteries they can blow air through there one side and the heat out the other side having a solid cell battery that draws that type of current puts out a lot of heat and so they just recently have figured out how to build a big battery that'll power the cars has anybody thought of a solar operated car mm -hmm. yep. talked about it but nobody's hydrogen it. too mm -hmm. yeah hydrogen's a good idea yeah, we've been playing with they that. have them. Uh, Honda is playing with the hydrogen powered vehicle a lot. We were we were working with hydrogen cars before I left the company I was with. We were, you know, putting together hydrogen cars. They're still doing it. Yeah, just a little bit behind. Yeah. One of the, the big problems. Yeah, wait, wait, Jeff, what? One of the big problems of the Prius 
is they wanted to get the mileage to be very, very good. Yeah. And they did. It's a wedge but, design. But they really had to make the body, the tires, everything else smaller, lighter. And because of that, it's kind of a tin car. Yeah. Tell me if I'm right or wrong about this, because again, you know, when it comes to cars, I'm I'm just uh, right. you know I just I just say hey, it looks good, I'll buy it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you put smaller wheels on a car, don't you get less mileage? Not I mean, necessarily. Not I mean, like don't don't bigger tires kind of give you better mileage, gas mileage? No, not necessarily. necessarily. Not necessarily. Thing, okay. I just that, hey, I'm just asking a stupid question by a stupid guy here. You know. The thing that hurts gas mileage or mileage period is weight. Yeah. 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 I mean that thing gets it'll get fifty five miles a gallon. It does real well. Well, you remember when we were growing up, uh uh, Jack, the cars like the Cadillacs and what oh, sure. just what just uh, I mean Hell, I mean, they could. They, everybody had to get out of their way when they went down the road because those things that they crashed into you, that was it. Yeah. You know, as uh, I think it was Jay Leno once said, you know, cars were so dangerous that if one of one one of these monsters were to hit another one of those monsters, they just you know, hose off hose, hose, hose off the dashboard and sell it to somebody else. You know, one of the things I remember when I was a boy. We used to build these coasters to go down the hills. Oh, in San yeah, Francisco. yeah. You remember when they used to have the soapbox derby? Sure, you know, yeah. and... Uh, All bearing wheels? Yeah, yep. yeah. Skate, uh, uh, roller skate wheels. That's what we used. Thanks. All bearing yeah. wheels. Uh, uh, not cardboard boxes, but uh, uh, wooden crates. And to this very day, I wonder how come some of the kids that I knew, like Bobby Della Fria, who would go down the steepest hill he could find. How come none of us ran into the bumper? You could, you're talking about Dagmar bumpers the other night? Yeah, yeah. And didn't, you know, they should be the, cr some kids gotta be walking around in San Francisco. <laughs> Does anybody know what With we're referring to when we say bumper. Dagmar? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dagmar was a woman who was on a show called Broadway Open House, which was the precursor to The Tonight Show. It was the original Tonight Show. It was called Broadway Open House with Jerry Lester and yeah. Dagmar. And people watched that show because Dagmar had these enormous tits. That's right. So that's what you mean when you say right. Dagmar right. bumpers. She yeah. was the Carol Dota of her day. It, well, yes, I think. Is and that no. what the bumpers were really called? I remember the bumpers that had that's, tits on them. They were designed just like it. The Cadillacs, remember? Oh. Um. Hmm, yeah. big breasts on the car. You can learn something from your elders. That's well, you know, there was a guy, there was a guy, a teacher out at uh, out at San Francisco State named S.I. Hayakawa who became very famous for writing an essay about the sexual symbolism of the American automobile. And uh, it was taken so seriously by some of the automotive companies that Ford came out with what they considered was the ultimate uh, sexual symbol in an automobile, and that was the Edsel, in which the front of it looked like a vagina. He was a senator. Yeah, later on, senator. but early on he wrote this essay that was yeah. very famous. And they, they took that to heart and th said, hey, if we make the front look like a vagina, this will really sell. But it didn't sell. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it was uh, the biggest mistake I think Ford ever made. Biggest flop in the history of American automobile manufacturing. Yeah. But for collectors, it's found money. Oh, absolutely. But also, it was a car that was a little ahead of its time, too. I mean, it had push button uh, 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 well, the gear changing yeah. and things now, like now that. Now, the only thing that was really ahead of its time was the styling. Uh, the first uh, cars to have push button uh, uh, automatic transmissions was from Chrysler in 56. Edsel doesn't come along until 58. Yeah. And I, I, had a, uh, I had a Rambler Ambassador, the first car I ever had that had the push button mm -hmm. tranny. It used to light up, you know. It was cool. 
bought it for twenty well, bucks. The, the, uh, Edsel school. had the actual push buttons on the hub of the uh, of the steering wheel. That was the only thing that was That's really cool. revolutionary about that car. And by the way, it wasn't like it was an electronic push button. They were they were mechanical, weren't they? No, yeah. they were electronic. Were they electronic? Uh, Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, back positive. in the fifties. Yep. They yeah. had, well, sure. You know, server they had relays. You know, yeah, relays and little motors. Yeah, remember oh. those Ford uh, uh, flip top convertibles? The Skyliner, I think they were called, or Sunliner. One of the Skyliner. Skyliner. Yeah, you know, they were wired from back to front with God knows how many relays. And uh, the, the, the transmissions with the push buttons that work were the Chrysler transmissions because they were mechanical. Mm. And in the ass, too. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, so much for old cars, folks. <laughs> From yeah. old dudes. Hey, well, look, join me for the intersection. We might just talk about this instead of the stuff I got planned. <laughs> you mean, what, you plan your show? Of course I do. You know. How does that, how does that work? How does that work exactly? If I can't figure out how to turn on and off a computer, I got to plan the rest of the shit to feel like I'm doing something. <laughs> He's got to talk about Jack Benny and Jello. <laughs> yeah, you just yeah. don't like Jello. That's you're un-American. Un-American. Uh, I I've never been a big fan of Jello. <laughs> Me either. Thank you. I only eat it when I'm. You sick. know, it's basically it's just wiggly water. You know, and and gelatin, and gelatin. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll eat it. I'll eat it, but you know, it it kind of it's 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 hospital food. It's like I, I rather have pudding. If we eat pudding, I don't. Pudding. I like pudding. Yeah, pudding. I can I eat the whole. Thing. Give me a good tapioca. Oh, oh, oh tapioca oh, looks oh. like baby shit. Yeah, Ooh. I love tapioca pudding. But you do. I love but rice pudding. Likes rice tough. pudding. Yeah, I, used to be, I know how to make that. Rice pudding's terrific. Yeah. Well, they have, in fact, they okay. have uh, Rice to Riches, a store down in Soho, which sells nothing but rice pudding, various flavors mm. of rice pudding, and it's really to die for. But Alex, you're somebody who likes tongue, and the only tongue I like is in some young woman. Never mind. You <laughs> catch it for the intersection and just. Well, I it. like tripe, and the tripe I like most is your show, Jack. <laughs> so. <laughs> well said. Well said. Okay, uh, Jack Bishop. He's uh, right after this thing here, mm. yeah, on mm. on the same network. Like network. It's like saying astronaut for those guys who went up in the rocket the other day. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I, I, I think we are over, uh, what? Not that Every again. Every show you brought up your your idea of what an astronaut is. Well, is. I'm sorry, the, those guys I, weren't you're, astronauts. You're entitled to your opinion. Uh, no, listen. I, I, I happen the to people agree who with give you. away the wings for astronauts say I, I they agree can't with get you. one because they didn't serve any function. They I sat there. It's like you. it's like, yeah. like, you know, yeah, you rode the roller coaster. But you didn't exactly operate the roller coaster. How come they didn't get out of the ship and like uh, fix a light bulb or something? Or something. That would have made them an astronaut. Yeah, it would be nice, you know, if they did something that at least threatened their life, but they didn't. That's right. Anyway, hey, listen, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you to Alan, and thank you very much, Josh and Trucker Steve. It's good to see you. I mean, I just, you know. Yeah, but just by waving your hand, we know you're okay, you know. Uh, 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 Tony, nice to have you here. Always nice pleasure. and quiet, Tony. John Larkin, <laughs> terrific. And, of course, uh, uh, I'm glad you were here tonight, uh, uh, Kevin, because, you know, you're really uh, terrific and you know all about cars. And I said, I said goodbye. I, I thank Josh, too, didn't I already? Okay. Yes. I, I want to make sure I never miss anybody, otherwise you'll be pissed at me anyway everybody give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye back at you okay there they go folks that's our citizen panel for tonight uh jack bishop is next he's here with the intersection it will follow this program immediately as soon as we sign off and he'll be using skype for your calls and what you do is you uh it, when it says what do you want to call to say gabnet live and it will immediately start ringing uh, Jack's program, okay? Anyway, that's it uh, for tonight, folks. Uh, we're uh, 
Uh, we're off for a couple of days until Monday. We'll be back on Monday, by the way. Uh, I should tell you that. I'll be back on Monday uh, at uh, 4 o'clock with our pop-up show. Then we're back here again on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 10.30, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, it's time to, for you to get your vaccination if you haven't done so already. Be part of the club. Bye.